Super Sports, a production of Cook Cable Vision of Syracuse, presents Syracuse Lacrosse. Today in the Carrier Dome, it's the defending Division I national champion Syracuse Orangemen against the Division III Cortland State Red Dragons. And hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Cohen. The last time there was a lacrosse game played here in the Carrier Dome, there were more than 20,000 people on hand. That is the largest crowd in the history of college lacrosse. Syracuse defeated Cornell to win the national championship, and they closed out a perfect undefeated season. It's uh, not likely we'll see 20,000 people again in the Dome this season. Syracuse has already tasted defeat, but Dale Drypulcher, despite that defeat at the hands of Johns Hopkins, many people feel Syracuse will be back in the national championship game. Well, in talking to them, I think they feel the pressure's off. Uh, they did not have a really good week of practice. Not that they didn't practice well. They didn't have facilities. So they felt pretty good, if you can feel good about a loss. But I think they felt the pressure's off a little bit. The undefeated season, they have to worry about that. Let's get on with the rest of our schedule. And Cortland is on that schedule, and it should be kind of interesting for tonight to see how Syracuse comes against the Cortland. Cortland State has no qualms about coming here to the Carrier Dome. They realize early in the year you're better off playing indoors with the perfect conditions. And despite the fact that they're outmanned and they know it, they still do not plan to slow down the game or go to any kind of gimmicks. They want to transition. They want to move the ball up and down. And indeed, they did score 10 goals last year right here. Well, sure, they had a great first quarter. They can do things, but what they want to do is play the game they're going to play the rest of the season. They're currently ranked fourth in Division Three. They think they have a pretty good chance of challenging Hobart, so they're not going to do anything special. They'd like to go out and get in that groove against Syracuse and see if they can upset them, get some goals early. It's going to be an uphill battle for the Red Dragons. And Dale said since we last saw lacrosse in here, everybody throughout the lacrosse world is talking about Air Gate. Gary Gate, who left his feet from behind the cage, went over the back of the cage to score twice, and that is the rage. It's equivalent to the to the jump shot and the slam dunk combined. You know, you're absolutely right, and you're already seeing it with kids trying it in summer camps and things, so it's really become almost a cliche. Everybody knows about it, but they love to see it, and it'll be interesting to see when he makes his first attempt here in the Dome how the fans react. It's also going to be interesting to see what Cortland State's uh, very accomplished defender Jeff Clodson does. He is perhaps uh, the best defender in all of Division Three lacrosse, and he's from right here in Camillus. Now that, that, that figures. Uh, in talking to the Cortland folks, they really feel that Clodson, they wouldn't trade him for anybody. They think he is Division One, Division Three, one of the best defensemen around, and they're very, very happy with him. And, and uh, he should draw some interesting people tonight too. So let's keep an eye on Clods in number seven. And remember, in this sport, if you get a hot goalie, he can keep a team that obviously or otherwise outmanned. He can keep the team in there. Richie Barnes is going to be expected to do that for Cortland State. We'll be back to meet the starting lineups. We'll have the opening face-off right after these words. The Cortland State attack. John Roth, 5-5 senior out of Sachem with an assist. Ed Welski, 6-4 senior out of Fulton, 11 goals and an assist. Rick Bennett, the sophomore from East Greenbush, 4 goals, 3 assists. The Cortland State midfield is Matt Chappell, senior out of the Clinton, 4 goals and an assist. Andy Wilkes, junior from Brewster, 1 goal, 1 assist. And Joey Delora, a junior from Corning East. The face-off man for Cortland State, Joe Buffalini, junior out of Schenectady. And the Cortland State defense has Jeff Clodson, top defender in Division III last year. He has a goal, 28 ground balls. Also, uh, Steve Smart, junior from Jordan Elbridge, and Dave Walter, a senior out of Homer. The goalie for Cortland State, Richie Barnes, a senior out of Cortland, stopping 65% of the shots, averaging 7.3 saves per game. And for Syracuse now, the starting attack, Greg Burns out of James Old DeWitt, John Zilberti out of West Tennessee, and Jim Egan out of Yorktown. Zilberti already with five goals and eight assists. The Syracuse midfield featuring Gary Gate and Paul Gate. Gary already with nine goals, two assists. Paul Gate, seven and four. Rodney Dumpson joining the midfield this year. He's from Port Washington, the fastest player. Syracuse's new faceoff man is Kirk Pratt. And the Syracuse defense, stalwarts that they are, Mark Stouffer out of Jamesville DeWitt, Pat McCabe, a sophomore from Elmont, and Jim McNamara, the senior from West Genesee. And they'll be playing in front of Matt Palin, the goalie for the national champions, the defending champs, averaging 77% saves. He had a career-high 21 last year. Just underway in time for the second face-off. They faced it off, and nine seconds in, Gary Gate 
Taking a pass and coming right down the center, firing away and beating Richie Bards for his first goal of the game. And we apologize for coming in a few seconds late as Syracuse leads Cortland State by a score of one to nothing. So Gary Gate out of the gate quickly with goal number 10 on the year. Off the faceoff, Kirk Pratt wins it. Normally he'll head off the field and uh, that's where he is heading right now. Gary Gate in possession. Down into the box and they'll go behind the cage. John Zuberti always easy to spot with the orange sneakers. Overshooting Gate as he tried to fill the slot and it's out to midfield. John Roth is pushed over the uh, midfield strike. Pat McCabe, it's a push against Syracuse. And Cortland State will get the ball offensively for the first time. Number six is Andy Wilkes. Jerry Casciani is the coach for the Cortland State Red Dragons. And here comes Andy Wilkes, junior out of Brewster. Many transfers on the uh, Cortland State team, and we'll tell you about that. John Roth with the ball. Being a poke check outside by... Pat McCabe, who's as good as anybody in the game of lacrosse at that particular skill. Poke checking the ball defensively. Wilkes has it again. Wilkes moving left. Controlled uh, Cortland State offense. Phil Schluter playing in with a big stick, number four. Cortland State giving it off. Rick Bennett behind the cage. On the exchange now to Wilkes. Teams are even up. With the ball now. Joey Delore, number 15. A little bit of a weave action by Cortland State. Bennett's going to get it again. Now they're running a lot of a lot of picks and a lot of motion behind now. And they're just going to take their time. They're not going to slow it down, but they're not going to they're not going to be impatient either. I think this is a credit to the Syracuse defense and also to the patience of the Cortland offense shot. There's a bouncing shot by Roth. Had it gone out of bounds, it would have belonged to Cortland State, but the Red Dragons got a stick on it, and they uh, lost the ball to Syracuse, but it's off McNamara out of bounds. Last touch, however, by Cortland State, so Syracuse will get it, and Gary Gate will come over to throw it in bounds. One to nothing, Syracuse. Cortland going to ride, and Gary Gate will probably end up taking it himself. Gate with the dodge of Bennett. Goes by yet another player, and he brings it across. He's into the box now. He makes his move left. That's the direction he normally goes, and here's Syracuse working from behind. It's in the stick of Gate again. Number 42 also in Marichek out from the Gates hometown, another part of the Canadian connection in an attack. A real true freshman. From British Columbia, Tom Marichek. Here's Gary, brother Paul, back to Gary. He nice fakes face. on the bounce intended for Paul, and Zilberti will try to keep it in, and he does. Zilberti on the ground to Gary Gate up to the top of the point. Nice change of direction move. Rodney dumps it playing with the Gates this season. John McKinnon for Cortland 16 did a nice job of stopping that unsettled situation. Now Syracuse going to be a little more patient and set up. Paul Gate is at the point now. On the give to Rodney Dumpson. And Greg Burns, number 14 outside. Zoberti finds the slot. Gate, Paul rushed his shot. And as he tried to pass it across for Dumpson, it was intercepted, recovered by Burns. He's decked. There's a shot. Two men in the cage. And it's saved by Richie Barnes. Going to put a little pressure on now. Clodson's got the ball. Right by Burns, and he forces the turnover. Nice job by Burns. I don't know if Cortland knew that they were going to put that pressure on right away, and they did. And Clodson lost it, but good pressure by Syracuse. Here's the gate with the trying to feed a lot of people in there. Very difficult to feed the crease with that many red shirts, but kind of an unsettled situation. Ball down. Burns tries the shot. Back out. Another shot by Dumpson. Save, and then... Syracuse gets it back. And here we are back to live action with Bonacci with the ball. Now he gives off to Amaya. Freddie Amaya, second Fre middies in. Freddie Amaya from Hicksville, highly regarded player. Here's a pass and a shot that's high off the stick of uh, Brooke Chase. You know, I did the Empire State Mega games. Mega Joe Bonacci, number one. Did the Empire State games a couple of years ago, and boy, everybody was after Freddie Amaya, and he ended up right at Syracuse. And uh, 
That's one of the things that keeps Syracuse going is that recruiting in Amaya. Everybody was after him. Earl Hall, number seven, is on. Bonacci transferred from Navy in the game. With Amaya, and here's Zilberti. Zilberti likes to work from behind. Turned into quite a feed man last year after having the outstanding scoring season two years ago. Picked up again outside. There's a shot whistled in close, and, and they say it's going to go over to Cortland State. Give number 16 credit again from Cortland. McKinnon, he really helped stop that and put the pressure on Zilberti, and so Cortland will have a chance now to clear the ball. 10.45 left, first quarter. That was a pass intended for Tom Marachek. Here's Zilberti outside. And you see him getting the pressure. We really got crunched in a play by John McKinnon. Syracuse applying the pressure now. And they get it back again. And they're going to change on the whistle or horn. Official tonight, Bill Ellis. Steve Miller, along with Mr. O'Hara. John Zilberti behind. Deliberate set up this time by Syracuse. Gary Gate to Paul. They swing it to Dumpson. Syracuse working the ball clockwise. Now they kind of sneak it in. Zilberti from behind. Here's Gary Gate. He tries to dive. Is it in? Yes. yes. There's the variation on the theme by Gary Gate. Instead of coming over the top, he dives and wraps it around in one motion. I think many of these people are stunned. They don't know quite what they just saw. Well, Gate, you said it's a variation. Watch. He gets the ball behind. Gate's now behind. Watch. Fakes left and then dives. And what he did before is over the top. Now he just went by the side. <laughs> Two goals for Gary. Kind he just a, wraps it in there. Kind of a subway gate on that. That wasn't an air gate. That was along the side. Face-off once again. Syracuse has been controlling face-offs. Kirk Pratt. Pratt rolling it back between his legs, and it's picked up by, guess who? Gary Gate. First midfield in. Gary Gate's in. Now Dumpson's coming in. Nice sprint from the exchange area, the area where subs can go in. Now they get the ball behind. That was Marichek, 42. This is Rodney Dumpson. He is the fastest Syracuse player in the quickest as well. And Dumpson has it now. Zilberti. Dave Walter, the defender there. Here's a behind the back shot to score. And that time it's Paul Gate. And right now it's the Gates three and the Red Dragons nothing. That's right. Uh, Steve Smart the defender lost him on that, and he had uh, watched the pass. Third goal by Here's the pass 19, from Marichek, and you see Smart coming over to help out, along with McKinnon. But Gate did that behind the back shot on a nice pass from Marichek. And it is quickly a 3 to nothing Syracuse lead. Richie Barnes never even saw that one coming. Kirk Pratt wins the face again, and here comes Gary Gate quickly downfield for Paul. He's being held from behind, and they whistle must it. Must have warded. It warded off. Must have been because otherwise it would have been one of that new play on if the ball was on the ground, but it wasn't. It was a ward, so Cortland will have to clear. Well, it looked like he was being held from behind. Yep. But it might have been the offensive man holding the stick. At any rate, that was the call, a ward, so Cortland will clear. And the Red Dragons try to get something mounted offensively as they whip the ball outside the box where it's played by John Roth. He goes behind Bennett. Caleb was out of the cage. A little bit of confusion there for a minute on who had who, but Palom will all oftentimes come out. Double team also on inbounds plays. J.J. Graham out of Liverpool, a sophomore, making the move on Rod Persing. Knocked away and recovered by Syracuse. There come the Orange into their transition game. Persing. One of the big stick minis. Scaramazzino also in. And this is Marichek, played by Klodzin. They'll make it smart. Now Walters 
Maracek, little man, splits the defense, loses the ball. As he tried to get it back, we had a flag. It's going to be a slash. First man up. We'll see if we can. There it is right there. Got Maracek on the head, then on the shoulder. Which is legal? <laughs> Neither one. Okay. So Walter goes off. Syracuse now in their first man up situation. They have one extra attacker if you're new to lacrosse. They'll try to find that open man, and there he is. Oh, that quickly. Almost like an alley oop as they threw it to the backside of the cage, and Gary Gate gets goal number three. It is four to nothing, Syracuse, and we have played less than one quarter. Less than one half of one quarter. <laughs> There's a nice pass. Dumps in, then they get it over. And, and, of course, they were extra man, and it's very difficult to, with the speed that Syracuse has, it's very difficult to cover them. They weren't that quite that, no, that no, they weren't that yes. fast. <laughs> but they're fast. One thing it tells you about faceoffs, however, is how much it can control the tempo of the game. And they're really, if Cortland doesn't get the faceoffs, they're, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And yet another one taken by Kirk Pratt as he wins it from uh, Buffalini. And Pratt will give it up and head off. Carrying it in now. Syracuse into the attacking box. Good hit. Rolls over to Richie Barnes. And Barnes will uh, send back Clodson and Barnes on the exchange. Now the goalie steps out of his crease. He's fair game. He cannot go back in. Up into the middle of the field, and McKinnon makes the move by Schluter. Carrying it down. And from behind, here's Bennett with Roth open. And Roth getting it now. He's going to draw McCabe. Trying to make the move on McCabe. Giving it up. Welski, the big man. Hook checked away. As Matt Chapel lost it, and Bennett gets it back. McCabe again coming over to dislodge the ball from Bennett and taking it away. He goes to Caleb, will trigger the outlet pass. Upfield to Schluter. A loop pass across. And not held on to, but kept in play by Persing. It eludes the check. Persing made a nice move as they came in off the bench. Bishop was after him. And now they're going to get the big sticks off. Scaramazzino and Schluter and Rob Persing, 34, coming off as they that. give him a chance. Freddie Amaya, number eight, with the ball. Now Joe Bonacci. And Bonacci. Former Navy player makes his move, backs it out, gives it up to Pearl Hall. Hall, uh, his hometown is Brewerton. He played at Liverpool. He faked the pass to the cutter, Burns. Now he finds Amaya for a low heart shot, saved by Richie Barnes. Nice save by Barnes. Had a pretty good shot at him. Now Barnes trying to get rid of it. Syracuse putting a little pressure on here and not giving up anything. Costa with the ball. Todd Costa. Trying to get it upfield. It's pulled down by Joey Delora, who redirects it back to his goalie. And in fact, Cortland stayed going the wrong way, but they're trying to get something mounted down four to nothing. Now in the center of the field, they get the ball to J.J. Graham. And the Syracuse defense is there. Syracuse is playing defense all the time, both ends of the field, putting pressure on Cortland, not giving up any clears, and that's forcing Cortland to look for some things. They got the ball over there, but... McNamara stays with Bennett. McCabe comes over to play Roth, man to man. And watch the way McCabe wields that stick. No There's the takeaway by Pat McCabe. No surprise, and uh, no wonder he was the most viable player in the junior world championships. He does that to everybody, right? Talking to different coaches and some scouts, they say people are playing McCabe and they don't want the guy on McCabe's side to have the ball because they end up losing it. Fast break now, unsettled. Gate to Burns, the dump off, and the bounce shot high over the cage, but the Orangemen will keep it. Pretty good defense by Dave Walter from Cortland to alter the shot. He couldn't get the shot he wanted, but 
as Syracuse will get the ball back. So Birdie behind. Roy Simmons. Mild mannered coach of the Orange Bowl. Taking his team to the uh, final four, what, six years in a row? Got a phenomenal record. Two national championships. Syracuse were leading it four to nothing. Zilberti, now a senior. Up top, Paul Gate, behind the back to Gary. Fake, fake, fake score. I may have left out one fake. Well, I, yeah, I was going to say it's tough to. Clodger and Smart can tell you, though. I think they, they were trying to defend against him, along with Richie Barnes, the goalie. And you talk about an athlete. You'll see what. There's the behind the back pass. Watch. Paul, one, two, three, and very difficult to stop that. And the Cortland State Red Dragons won a timeout. Gary Gate, as you see, with four goals. We'll be back in a minute. Cortland State is down five to nothing. Last year, Syracuse beat them 26 to 10. The uh, 26 goals were the most Syracuse scored in a game last season. Only one other team scored more than the 10 that Cortland State did. Matt Palum, uh, he could go off for a sandwich. <laughs> One of the things that uh, he said they're still talking about that 82 win that Cortland had. And uh, the faceoffs really are a big part of the story. They really can't do much when they can't control the tempo at all. And Syracuse is getting every faceoff. It's a mirror image of the score. Absolutely. And here's yeah. another one won by Syracuse. That was although Smith. that time, yeah, Andy Smith was in. Six for six. It's five to nothing. The ball is intercepted, but regained and then lost and taken back by Cortland State. And at Syracuse, this is what you can see right now. They're putting pressure on. Lots of times teams will drop back in a zone, and Syracuse is putting pressure on them right away for the moment they get the ball. Burns it's on Clodsden. Good practice. Something you're going to have to do during the year eventually. Nice pass. Beautiful interception. interception off the stick of Delora. And here's Percy. And we get a whistle. Somebody may have stepped offside. Must have been Syracuse. They wouldn't have blown the whistle. What? What do we got here? Oh, it's... Yeah. So simultaneous foul. That action must have been away from the ball uh, in the area of the bench. Yeah, I didn't see it. So they'll both be in the box for a minute. Oh, 30 seconds. So they'll have to serve at least a full 30 before either one of them can be released. J.J. Graham of Cortland and uh, Pat McCabe of Syracuse go off. On uh, the simultaneous slashing penalty. Jim O'Hara makes the call. And it took about 1.1 seconds for Syracuse to score that man up goal. Oof. The last time they didn't even, usually the object is to whip the ball around and see if you can beat the defender as their man down. They have to slide, slide, but Syracuse bypassed one man and got a goal as you said in about a second and a half the last time. Now watch the choreography here. It's five on five. You got Paul Gate with the ball. Gary Gate to the near side. Tom Marichek the other British Columbian player around the pick. He comes back the other way. Nobody rolled toward the net. This just makes a little more space to play. As you said it's five on five so you have a little different Perspective, they're all even. Oh, nice check. Ball gate lost the ball and the stick. You can't play without the stick. Burns is there to pick it up. Now it's really unsettled, but a good job by Cortland State. The battle on at midfield. It goes by Roth. Let's see what and the call is. Cortland ball. That was Costa, number 20 for Cortland, that did such a good job of checking. Did you see Kyle Federley hustling after that ball on the sideline? That's right. Well, there's Gate. There's the check right there by Costa. Great check. Took the stick, the ball, left his glove. Still now, I think they're even up. Nope, they're coming in right now. Now they're even. Persing so. and Delora come on to even up things. Syracuse leading five to nothing, however. Schluter all over him like a blanket. There's a pass and an attempted swipe and a behind the back shot. Roth, the little man, scoops it up. They list him at 5-5, and I have my doubts. 
Well, that's what they say about lacrosse. You don't have to be big to play lacrosse. It ha helps to be quick. Huh. There's a quick little man in on there. Scaramazzino with the big stick in just caused that. Nice job by Scaramazzino. Now it's fast break. And Scaramazzino wants to pass. He wants to get one from Persing. Persing carrying it across midfield. He's done that several times already. Nice shake and go move and a reverse. It's Marichek with the ball. Feeding down low to Zilberti. The give and go behind the back and in. Give and go and Marichek from British Columbia with the goal and it is six to nothing Syracuse. Only a freshman. Nice look by Zilberti and uh, Marichek just very, very quick. He's a guy, you know, the Gates said about him. They said, you know, if you think we're good, coach, you got to see this guy that's still left up there. They went up and ended up with Marichek and the freshman will be somebody to keep an eye on. That's his first goal of this game. Tom Marichek now with eight goals on the year. And here is the seventh faceoff won by Syracuse, but Pratt pays the price. Burns can't find it. Freddie Amaya does. He draws the double team, gives it up in time to Earl Hall. Hall whipping it down. Here's another opportunity now as Burns drew the triple team, lost the ball. Marichek is going to get there first and pick it up. Tom Marichek behind his back. Here's Zilberti. Marichek again. You know, he's used to playing in the box, and you got a about nine square feet. He had a three foot square box, and now in field lacrosse, he's got 36 square feet. So Marichek, just a lot of moves. There's a setup by Marichek himself, the behind the back pass. Then it goes over to Zoberti, and Marichek is cut, and nobody stayed with Marichek. And you see how well he placed the ball. Now run that by me again, the, the, the box in. Three by three. Three by three, that's it? Yeah. Wow. Much as nine square feet, if I multiplied correctly, <laughs> and I think it's uh, then it'd be 36 square feet in the uh, field lacrosse. So, if you can convert that to yards, you can come over and measure my room for a carpet. <laughs> in the meantime, it's seven to nothing, Syracuse. We're in the first quarter, and here comes Richie Barnes. Yeah, Syracuse keeping the Brazil birdie after Barnes. Delora has it now. Good luck by Delora. Minute and a half to go in this first quarter. Seven nothing. Here's a loop and a shot and a score. No, oh, outside. Oh, hit the side of the cage. Yep. So Palin took away the angle. Nice job. He kept one foot in. Needs a little bit of help. And he's got a couple of people on the wing, but he's going to get doubled right there. He gets the ball to Scaramazzino. Big stick. Who will take his time and get it back to Matt. Scaramazzino is one of the uh, Syracuse co-captains, along with Zilberti. And now they got the short stick guys on. Freddie Amaya's in and number 30 also. Stouffer up the sideline to Earl Hall. Hall running by across midfield into the box, giving it up. Greg Burns, Freddie Amaya, John Zilberti. And they feed up close in a quick stick attempt. Egan passing to Burns. Burns ends up being closest to his own shot. Half a minute to go. First quarter, 7 nothing. Also in for Syracuse, number 30, Dan Cahey. Pretty good defense there against Cahey. It's kicked toward the sideline, however, by Cortland State and out. McKinnon knocked it out. Stay Syracuse ball. Earl Hall picks up the ball. 19 seconds, as you can see. Billy Bowman coming on for the first time. Sophomore out of Great Neck South. The clock is on the field in lacrosse. That means the time clock is literally brought onto the field by somebody who runs alongside one of the officials. Here's Amaya passing it to Hall. He might have been better off to take the shot. One second to go and. Cahey did not see the clock. The end of the first quarter with Syracuse out to a 7 to nothing lead over Portland State. We've just seen what has to rank as one of the most dominating quarters of lacrosse uh, that we've shown you in recent years. Well, they're really spreading that. They, they weren't spreading out. 
Gary Gate first goal, second goal, and then they're moving right along here. Marichek establishing himself. There you're going to get the stats. Faceoffs helps really set up the shots because Cortland has not had an opportunity to get the ball down there and get off a nice shot against an unsettled situation for Syracuse and just not being able to get the faceoffs and establish their offense has hurt Cortland in the first quarter. You don't see a time of possession stat, but right. it would be about 90% Syracuse. Matt Palem credited with one save. Kirk Pratt winning yet another faceoff for Syracuse, and here comes Gary Gate with a full head of steam. Fakes them behind the back, gives it up. Coming in is Paul, he shoots and scores. Well, that time it took him 11 seconds to open the second quarter. It was only nine to open the game. And Paul Gate gets a goal. It's now eight to nothing. Let's talk a little bit about faceoffs. We've been mentioning them. Cortland's having a problem with them. Sergey's doing well, but Bill Durgel was the faceoff man last year. And this is what happens when you get a faceoff and you can get some speed down there, get an unsettled situation. It's very difficult. Defense has to slide, pick up men, puts a little more pressure on them. But I think Kirk Pratt is is going to be good. I think the toughest part of the season was this first part of the season. They had some good face-off men he had to go against. One of the things he tries to do is get the ball to the gates on the wing, and that's his job. Durgel last year was about 35 pounds heavier, Dave, and really had a, a well, he won just about 70% of the face-offs. Yeah, actually coming in, Pratt was below 50%. Durgel was 70%, and it was almost unheard of for him to lose a face-off. You know, the thing with Durgel is even when he went against the great guys, uh, Flynn from Pennsylvania, places like that, he at least got 50%. So really was a dimension that Syracuse really enjoyed last year. And, and here you see the, the face-off as that's uh, Metz and from Cortland and Pratt. And Syracuse got the ball because Metz stepped on the stick. We take our chances showing any replay because Syracuse can strike so quickly. That's right. Here's Marichek, who's had a couple of behind-the-back goals. Cortland Crane, a pretty tight move. Rodney jumps in with a low screenshot, and he gets on the scoreboard as the count goes to 9 to nothing. Let's see, is he the first American to score in this game? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good possibility. The goal for uh, I think Zilberti got one, didn't he? Number six, right here's, the, here's the look. McKinnon jumps out, number 16, but you see the angle that he gave him, and Barnes not able to, not able to really do much in that one-on-one -on -one situation. You can see the speed there. Well, Dave checks the international stats. Yeah. It's been the Gates and Marichek up till now. Zilberti got a, I was going to say, they spread it out amongst uh, the Canadian connection. If you've never been to the Carrier Dome, you'll understand why they have a Canadian flag up in here. They've recruited athletes from well, Canada. Wait, wait, wait. Leo Routens told me that was for him. I was going to say, I was going to say they recruited athletes in and football, Tom, basketball. Tommy Kane told me it was for <laughs> him. him. Right. There's Paul Gate, oh. look out, and a save by Barnes. Flag down. Uh, oh, one minute trip. There's the long pass. Nice shot, and Barnes tracked that one right down. Wasn't screened, and even though it was a hard shot, Barnes was able to keep his eye on it, which is key if you're going to stop Syracuse. Bad enough when they get down there and take a hard shot when you can't see him, and then. When you can, at least you have an opportunity to stop it. Man up now as they move the ball around. <laughs> Unbelievable stick handling skills. Oh. Here is Gary Gate getting dumped as he was setting up near the crease. And look at that hustle as he tried to dive to be the first one to the end line and keep the ball in Syracuse's possession. However, he is not successful. Steve Smart there with him. He's checking that. Gary's checking and saying that was a shot. They're saying, we know you didn't get close enough to it. He might have gone out of bounds. There's the cross cage feed, then the feed down in, and Gate makes a move. Now we'll see where the ball goes. See the end line. Right. Oh, well, I guess he went out of bounds before. Close call. Anyway, Cortland now running the ball up the sideline. That's Chapel. Took it all the way. And he pays the price as he's dumped 
Portland State keeps it, however, and Bennett is stripped of the ball. Scaramazzino giving it in close quarters to Palin. Up ahead and over the head of the intended receiver. And here come the uh, Cortland State Red Dragons trying to come back. It is nine to nothing, Syracuse. Greg Bishop is 22. I guess it might go without saying, but I'm impressed with Syracuse's intensity, Dave. I know it's their home, first home game, but they've really been able to maintain a lot of intensity. And they've, against Cortland, the team that obviously not up to the Hopkins in North Carolina, but they've been playing very, very well in front of a nice crowd. Michael Vorgang is on. He's got the ball now, number five. Looks like a soccer player out there, doesn't he, with those yep. dark shoes and dark socks. And here he is with the ball again. They're just using replacement pass and run, and let's check. Let's, let's slow this pace down a little bit, guys. Take a shot when you get it, but uh, let's just work it around and be patient. Joey Delora lost the ball. Here's Welski getting it back. <laughs> shot from behind. McNamara took the ball away from him. He thought he had an opportunity coming. Well, when you get beat, one way to do it is to try to snap the stick in two, and that's what McNamara did. Phil Schluter to Maracek. Really able to, Birdie has it. Really able to pass well, and, and the flag's down. So it'll be interesting to see if Syracuse gets a shot off here. Kehi. And the save by Richie Barnes, a good save by Barnes. Offsides, Cortland, that'll be 30. So Syracuse would be man up. Dan, Dan Kane, he's a junior out of uh, Homer High School, 193 pounder. Syracuse's third man up attempt. They've got one, one for two at this point. They have been very pleased with their man up. I don't think it's been a factor tonight. Okay, he is a transfer from Herkimer Community College. He's a junior college All-American. Oh. Played there for Paul Wareham. Call. <laughs> Gate. I think they had to go in and check it. Well, if you're a Cortland fan, you know the name Paul Wareham, Dave. He's an excellent lacrosse player. And, you know, that's the junior college All-Americans. And the, they won the NCAAs one year. And very, very good lacrosse program. Here's the goal. There's the feed by Z and there's a yeah you can see right there that the ball hit the net and number 22 Gary Gate the Syracuse goal by picks up his fifth Steve one assist number 23 so Scaramazzino got the assist assist to John they had to go to Zilberti yes. I a little confused. I saw Zilberti make the pass. I you can only get one assist so assist to number 22 Goal. <laughs> it was Gary Gate got the goal. Okay. It's Zilberti goal got the assist. Gary Gate. That's his fifth of the game. It's ten to nothing. Eleven twenty-five to go. Zilberti. First half. Twenty-two from eleven. At Syracuse with the ball again. This is Joe Bonacci transferred from Navy. Oh. And he gets room for a shot, and it's just high, but the orange will keep it by virtue of being closest to it. Well, J.J. Graham and was running defensively, Billy Millman, and they collided, trying to switch off on a man-to-man, -man or they had a problem setting up, and they collided, but not able to cash in Syracuse. So now it will be Marichek with the ball. And they get it way out up on top. Now Kehi. And now it is Marichek. Sending it outside to Kehi. He's played aggressively there as he sends it back to Marichek. From behind. Syracuse getting a lot of new people in the game at this point. And lots of time to go in the first half. Fake behind the back by Marichek. Bonacci and Amaya. And Kehi, all new names for you Syracuse lacrosse fans. As is Marichek. Deflected coming off of his stick, but regained. Boy, he's quick. Yes, he is. Walter was on him, but he's ready to pick the ball right back up and go on you. A little, little bounce, short hop there. For hotailing, 13 in. Amaya fake. Amaya splits the defense, gets separated from the ball, and we get a whistle and a flag thrown as well. A, oh, hold, I think. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a hold. 
they had uh, Amaya as he tried to make Court a move. You see his head come back. Penalty, uh, so that'll be a, there it is. You can see it just, just there is Marichek. Comes into view. So they bring on Zilberti and the Gates. With 10 minutes to go in the first half and Syracuse up 10 to nothing. And Rodney Dumpson is number six. Watch how quickly they can move the ball. There's the replacement. There's a shot where they just cut across. They bypass. They get the ball going. You think they're going to make a pass. And then they bypass the man. And they got it to Burns. 14. He quick sticked it right into goal. So Greg Burns gets uh, his first goal. Burns does not do a lot of scoring. Maybe one of the most unsung players. There's the, players. The, there's the shot right there where they look like they're going to pass it around the outside. And they got it to Burns. And he took the quick shot, got it by. Goal by Syracuse uh, winning 11 to nothing. That was a man up goal, their second of the game. And here's another faceoff won by Syracuse. And this time the uh, faceoff man is Paul Cannon. Great name for a lacrosse player. He got a good shot. And Cannon gets it over to Paul Gate. And there's a cannon. Barnes didn't oh. even know he stopped it. Or did he? It was one of those play on things. Yeah, and it was stolen by Syracuse. Uh -huh. And they feed to Gary Gate. And he, how does he stop his feet from going in the crease? I, you know, it's a, it's a, a real question of uh, millimeters, I think. Great job, and the fans love it. You know, they've, they've come to expect the kind of lacrosse they play here, very exciting. And, Gary Gates, six goals, two assists. Lacrosse, an exciting game to begin with, but the way these guys play it, Marichek, passing, they move the ball around. Look at that. He's got that lean perfected, doesn't he? Yep. I think Chase, Chase got an assist on that, I think. There was an example of the new play on rule there. At one point, the official was about to call. He interfered with the goalie and then and it worked to Syracuse's benefit, didn't it? Yeah. Ordinarily, the game would have been stopped, but it would have taken away the transition of Cortland State. As they're doing right now, they get a shot on the cage, and they'll keep it. Bennett was closest to the ball at the time it went out of bounds. Matt Pelham, the MVP in the national championship game last year. Great game against Cornell. Well, lots On of the excitement. inbounds. Here comes Welski. He's got size working for him. He had the shot. <laughs> also setting up shop in the crease, but he was pushed in illegally, so it'll stay Cortland Ball. That's the interpretation, and the push -er was Bob Smith. I like that tie. Yeah. <laughs> Not so sure about the shirt, but I like the tie. New hat, too, I think. Well, Roy's got to like the score. 12 nothing. This is Welski. He's from Fulton. He's 6 4. And he gets the cage as Palin came out to double team him. And Portland State gets on the board. Well done there by Ed Welski. Absolutely. And Matt Palum and the Syracuse defensive strategies, they, they will drop him out and double team people with him. And in this case, let's see what happens. That's Smith, 35. He's on Welski. And watch Matt. Now Matt just comes out, but the inside dodge there by Welski gave him a break. And a guy that big, Dave, has got to be powerful. And he was able to power through that jump and gives Cortland a goal. 12-1, 837 first half. 6 4 and 220. Big, good size. When, when he came out for the pregame introductions with John Roth, I thought it was the ball boy next to him. Roth is 5'5", five five and he's 6'4". Ball down. The scrum momentarily went to uh, Cortland State. Hotailing had it. He lost it. Syracuse can't quite pick it up. And here comes McKinnon. Good speed. And a Syracuse gets back defensively. 
with their short sticks. Welski has it again. You'd like to see them be able to put together a run here of a couple of goals and make this a game. See, did a he call. step out of bounds? Yes, he did. Could be a little confusing down there. And Smith, 35, will get the ball. You can see all the lines. There's football lines and the lines for the goal area, and there's hash marks, and can get a little confusing. Soccer also down there, so this facility is used for lots of different things. Rock concerts, I don't think they have any markings. For Did you enjoy that Bon Jovi? <laughs> no, I didn't catch that one. Matt Palin, near side, he goes to Bob Smith from CBA, the uh, defenseman. <laughs> Looks like a fish out of water there, doesn't well, it? Well, he did not a lot of finesse there as he ran into Graham, but the ball stays Syracuse. Bonacci has it. Oh, nice pass as uh, Brooke Chase went right through the slot. It was a very nice play. Richie Barnes being chased by Chase. Steve Smart's stick is lying down there in pieces. Clods in, upfield, gets the man coming in, Deloria. He spots a man in the middle of the field. This is Bishop. Syracuse rushing on a player now. Dan Lannon coming on. This is check your scorecard time. Everybody's playing. It's 12 to 1 Syracuse. Nice look. Trying to get the ball into Welski again. Portland State playing with a little more spirit now. Matt Chapel is going to move in on Schluter. And it rolls uh, right into the stick of Palo. He decides to come out. Matt does this a couple of times a game. <laughs> Gets oh. bored sitting back there. Yeah, well, it? you know, he's got to get into it. Earl Hall up ahead. Everybody cutting toward the cage, and it's overthrown, and Portland State's going to get it. You might have a tendency to get a little sloppy with an 11 goal lead. 6.25 left to go in the first quarter, but I don't want to reduce this to a scrimmage, but Portland's got to keep doing what's going to help them later in the year, so. They're going to keep right on regardless of what happens. There's no saving face now. If you're down 12 to 1, you might as well do what you want to do. That's right. Look at it as a learning situation. And you see the shots 23 to 4 there. You just can't score if you can't get any shots. And they really haven't had much chance. Scaramazzino doing it. Yeah, a frustrated great job swipe. There. Yeah, on Chapel. Schluter is in there digging and coming away with it. His hard work paid off. Behind the back he goes. Scaramazzino loses it momentarily. Scaramazzino on the sideline. Nice job. Uh, Trying to elude the man, but he stepped out. Try doing that with a 72-inch stick sometime in your backyard. <laughs> You'll grow to appreciate what these defensemen do. And a big stick defenseman right there is Steve Scaramazzino as he tried to watch. He comes up with the ball. It's just traveled a tad outside. The out of bounds line runs right through that white area that represents the football uh, bench area. Oh. There's Vorgang. Vorgang firing. Palem stops. Palem up ahead to Scaramazzino. Imagine it would be tough to be sharp in the cage in a game like this where you're not tested very often. Scaramazzino shot score. <laughs> Steve Scaramazzino gets his second goal of the year. He's only taken three shots. It's not a bad percentage. No. Nope. One of the co-captains. They got good Syracuse shot outage, I guess you could say, of their output, I guess I should say, from their big stick middies. And not only was that a shot, but Scarabazzino put it by Richie Barnes for a goal. So you like it when that happens. There's the pass. There's the shot. And I guess Hotelling should get an assist, 13. He didn't have to move, so... And if ever there was a game in which faceoffs told the story, this is it. But Cortland State takes this one. John McKinnon. Hook check away from him immediately. Nick Boynton, number five, had it. Now it's uh, taken back by Cortland State. The flag is flying, and we will get a call against Syracuse. I do believe. Yeah. So that'll be a trip. Syracuse will be manned down. When they played down at Hopkins with the concert that you alluded to, they were 
really down there without a lot of practice. It's pretty tough in the old days to go down there and play because you didn't have an indoor facility, but they did have the luxury of getting in there sometime, and now they are back to their home for the first time this year, and I think playing with a lot of intensity. You know, if you look at it, though, you go undefeated last year. This year, you come out. If you're going to lose, you might as well lose early to a team like Hopkins. Right. Because the odds are you're not going to lose too many times the rest of the season. And you have that revenge factor working for you as you try to repeat. And the pressure also of staying undefeated two you've, years is right. very, very difficult. You've done it once. You've had that perfect season. Now the job is to win the championship. We're back to even strength shot. Nice save by Palin. The rebound to Cortland State. Stouffer Wilkes down. couldn't hold on to it. Stouffer taking the ball and controlling it gives it off. But there's Hogue. Welski. Welski now gets it from Hogue. They get it on the outside. They tried to pass it. it back to Wilkes and Palem steals it away. Here he goes, Matt Palem. He's crafty. Oh, flag. Well, that would have been a whistle last year, but it's going to be a flag down this year. Hey, he was enjoying that. I think he was doing a little acting as he came up field. But he wanted to make sure that head. He wanted to make sure they knew that they impeded his progress. So he really did kind of shake his head a couple times. But Billy Ellis was right there. Now last year, you'll see when the foul was committed, this would have been a a whistle right there immediately. But what they did was they threw the flag down, and you see him get it again. What they want to do, Dave, obviously, as you see the end of the play, is not slow down a fast break and let it stop. They want to keep the game moving, and I think it's a, a good indication, good rule. Well, we've had 14 goals, yet this first half has been played at a rather rapid pace. Yep. 4.25 left, and Matt and Palem, uh, as you said, might not get a lot of action. He got a lot there, so his adrenaline's back up where it should be. The other thing to remember, too, is games in the dome tend to be longer than just about anywhere because so many balls roll out of bounds. Yeah. And the clock will stop. On the other hand, I've, I've uh, done games and ref games where the ball's rolled into a cow pasture, so at least they stay in the stadium. Oh, nice move. Here, Gates. Gates. And he came down inside. <laughs> He's smiling, though, as it comes off. You got to love it. As do the fans. Hey, this is entertainment. You know, that's sports is entertainment. There's the jump, the leap, not quite there. And then as he came down inside. Cortland State was ready for that. They sent over a defender. Did you see that? <laughs> well, you know what it does. It's like it's like a lot of things. People see it. Now it makes you think a little bit about it. You know, the next variation has got to be he fakes that and passes it to the weak side of the cage. He, he could probably do it. Ball down by Syracuse, or uh, by Cortland. Oh, nice lead pass to Zilberti. And there's the easy goal for Phil Schluter. As Syracuse transitioned it quickly, and they up the count to 14 to 1. And those big stick guys, they like to get down there when they got a chance, and Schluter was in perfect position. They work on this. This isn't something they don't do, and Schluter broke the, right there. Great pass by Zilberti. Really, you know, Zilberti could have continued on to take the shot, not that it would have made a difference in the game, but he's always looking to dish the ball off, and Schluter was the beneficiary on that. Nice job by Zilberti. Nice job by Schluter. And lacrosse is one sport where very definitely the pass sometimes is more spectacular than the score. Yep. Right here, this is a chance for Cortland. Yep, they get it. That was 16. It was McKinnon. And he still got it. They go behind. This is Bennett. And watch the poke check action here. Well, they got the whole new defense in. Oh, a double team and a vicious one. Welski is in there throwing his weight around. He's got 220 pounds to work with. Flags down. Winship was in for Syracuse, 39. John Winship, a freshman out of Fairport, New York. He's going to sit down and Todd Stratton, another freshman, in on a homer, New York. Called number 20, Paul Cannon. One minute slashing against Syracuse. Then it looks like he may be a little bit shaken up. Here's that action again. Ooh. Yeah, it was a real hard hit there. It was Paul Cannon. We're under three minutes to go. 
Portland State here with the man advantage. I believe this is their first man up opportunity. Second. They go behind the back in close intended for Welski. Taken down by Palin, his outlet to Scaramazzino. Here come the big sticks. Oh, Schluter had to reach back for that. He got it, though. Scaramazzino sticks around for a while. Schluter heads off along with Persing. This is Nick Boynton now, number five. John Goodwin also in number three. Intercepted by Cortland State. They dribble it. They're going to have to redirect and settle down a little bit while they get their people. Quads in. Excuse me, Walter. And here's Welski. He'll fire, but it's deflected right out of the point. Good job by Stouffer on Welski. Real good job. Yep. Welski gets the arm up. Couldn't deal on Stouffer, so he's looking to dish it off. And he is their big gun. And they're shutting them down all over the field. Minute and a half to go. Clots Coming up at halftime, Dale, uh, a very interesting talk with Roy Simmons about the state of the sport. Portland State is going to keep it. Roy, of course, is an artist and somewhat of a historian in this game. And uh, we'll talk about what has happened since the national championship and what it's been like to travel with the team and to have uh, the gates with you. and. What kind of sensation they have caused in the sport and in the lacrosse world. That'll be coming up at halftime. Welski one on one. Really stacked up on the crease. Clodson incidentally for Cortland has been playing offense. He's Smith playing defending. This is Bob Smith from CBA feeding the crease. That one's uh, upper deck, lower deck. <laughs> Off the stick of Roth. A little high, Roth, yeah. Good look. Now into the final minute here in the first half. Welski against Smith again. They don't double team him this time. Ward. He's got a ward, yeah. Dale, you might explain that for the benefit of first time viewers. Well, if you've got the ball, the offensive man, you'll see him hold their arm out a little bit. And what, what that's to do is to protect the stick in the other hand, but you can't really push the defensive man's stick off with your arm. You can hold the arm wherever you want to, but you simply can't force the defensive man's stick back, and that's what Welski did, and that will change possession. So Syracuse has it, Freddie Amaya. Now with the ball is John Goodwin. Sophomore out of Baldwinsville. Amaya to Hall. That's the time remaining in the first <laughs> half. McKinnon is there with Hall. Portland State comes away with it. Dave Walter lost it. Syracuse gets it to Bonacci, and here's Goodwin faking. Oh, get the fight. City. Rebound, score by Syracuse, and that is uh, George Clements, I believe, number 28. That's correct, out of Greenwich, Connecticut. I have to check the scorecard yeah. quickly. Watch Goodwin. Goodwin's going to get it. Pipe. Nice fake. Hits the pipe. Ball bounces out, and then eventually Clements got it. That is his first Syracuse goal. Syracuse's 15th goal, unassisted by... Goodwin, by the way, who... George got the Clemens. pipe before George that man Clemens got the goal is the kid who's a music major plays classical piano. I talked to him about lacrosse. You know that that stick on the fingers could could ruin a piano career. 15 to one, Syracuse on a course that could take them close to the 30 goal mark, which is the team record for goals in a game. Now 10 seconds to go. Can they beat the clock? They're going to keep it and get it back with three seconds. Now let's see what Nick Boynton can concoct here with three seconds. Remember, unlike basketball, you can run the ball in. You don't have to pass it. That's Clemens had the ball. Now they're going to give it back to Boynton. He cranks it up in the direction of the goal, and it's intercepted, and the half has come to an end. Syracuse leading Cortland State 15 to 1 at the half. Back with 
The Coors Halftime Highlights and our ADP stats and our interview with Roy Simmons in a minute. Roy, when I walk down the streets of Syracuse and, and the surrounding suburbs now, it's, it's almost unavoidable. You always see a little kid with a stick twirling it back and forth, and it cuts across all geographic boundaries and socioeconomic divisions. Uh, it's so pervasive, the sport of lacrosse. Well, I think uh, a college, a college town like Syracuse, and when it has a sport and they're successful at it, I think the kids in the community kind of mimic it. I think you'd see the same thing in football out in Columbus, Ohio. Um, we have a great deal of success here at the university. A lot of it has to do with uh, the local high school kids coming here. So uh, one hand uh, feeds the other. And uh, I think the, the weather here, kids are eager to play baseball, but that's going to be a month or two away. And I think kids are eager to get out and be competitive. And right now they can get the stick out and throw the ball around. And every high school in the county, almost every high school in the county has lacrosse. So there's a, a place to vent that uh, a desire for self-fulfillment. Could you ever foresee the day back back in the 50s when you took over for your dad that lacrosse would be played by everybody and would be become such a sport of choice in the springtime well, all Danny, year I, round? I was a high school boy in the 50s in town. I love lacrosse. I was the mascot on the team, the ball boy. And I chose to go away to school to New England so I could play lacrosse because there was no lacrosse. No, I never thought it would ever come back. It was here in the 30s and died out in the 40s. And there was virtually no school boy lacrosse in central New York in the 50s. You've never been the, the clipboard kind of coach with a, with a button-down shirt and a tie. Um, and yet now, by virtue of winning the national championship, uh, people are going to expect year in, year out, that Syracuse should be a, a Final Four kind of team in a town where the football team now has turned around, the basketball team is a perennial winner. Yet, yet you still retain your, your roots. Well, I've been here a few years. As I say, I, I used to shag balls when I was a little kid and sat on the bench and, and finally played here. I, I've seen the heyday of the 50s when I played. My dad was on a national championship team here in the 20s. Uh, I've seen some times uh, that were tough financially when the university couldn't support uh, lacrosse, and, and we took our knocks in the mid-70s, and uh, local lacrosse picked up a bit, and I was lucky enough to get some kids to stay home, and, and now we're back on top. Uh, I don't know. Things seem to swing like a pendulum. Uh, I hope we can maintain our strength and our power. Uh, the university has given us a great commitment. The athletic director firmly believes in, in, uh, in lacrosse, and, and the chancellor is a great supporter. Uh, they think it's healthy for the community, and, and as we do, and we're a pretty good uh, uh, showcase for the community to win a national title, and uh, uh, we're not hurting anybody, and we win in a few games. I remember sitting there in the dome watching the, uh, the championship being clinched and, and saying to myself, and having other people uh, voice the same sentiments out loud that yes, these were uh, national championship athletes and guys who really did belong in school, no doubt about it, up and down the line, that you had athletes who had no pro aspirations and did not have full rides for the most part, and they belonged in a college environment, and here they were winning a national championship. How satisfying is that compared to everything else, all the nonsense and stuff that goes on in college sports? Well, that's indigenous of the sport across the country. You know, there's not a great future. Nobody's going to get rich on it. There isn't a lot of uh, scholarship aid given for special talents within the sport. Uh, it's a pure American sport uh, taken from the Native Americans. It's kind of a fraternity. You know, if you'll notice after a ball game, the ball game can be tightly contested, but when the game ends, the last whistle blows, the two teams get together, shake hands, and they, they linger a while on the field to talk about the great play or the great game. And even after school, there is some club lacrosse. Uh, whether they meet in church or in a coffee shop, uh, they talk about the game of lacrosse uh, like one big fraternity. We're all pretty good friends. I'm always amazed in broadcasting the games that there are fewer fights during the course of the game because there seems to me to be a larger share proportion of legitimate acts of, of violence in a game of lacrosse within the confines of the rules, but, but more provocation than maybe even in football and in basketball and in hockey. Genuine hard hits that could start something, but they don't. Well, uh, yeah, you don't have genetic types that are 250 and, and bench press 400 pounds, and you don't have kids that are seven foot tall that are looking for pro prospects, and uh, there's not a lot of pressure on a lacrosse player. We win a few, lose a few. You know, winning only really counts in surgery and in war. 
And if we drop a ball game by a goal or two, we can congratulate the other fellow and say, we'll see you again. Is that what you did down at Hopkins? Uh, well, almost, not quite. <laughs> we had a great game uh, uh, last week, midweek. We played the Maryland Lacrosse Club, which is a very fine club that was a game. There was about 2,000 people came to watch uh, Syracuse University and Gary and Paul Gate. They applauded goals. They didn't applaud one team or the other team. It was a very neutral crowd. People who loved the game applauded good play, good goals, good denials of goals. And after the game, the crowd came down, the two teams got together, and uh, it was said and done. You know, it was a good game. Good for the people, good for the players. Along those lines, Roy Simmons, you might have a greater appreciation of the history of your sport than maybe any other coach in any other sport in the United States because of your family's connection to the sport. I mean, your dad virtually goes back to the roots of college lacrosse in this country. Yes, he does. He uh, was here in 1923, and we started lacrosse at Syracuse in 1919, so only a few years uh, before that did it start at the university level. How important is it to, to have this appreciation for the, the history and the tradition of the game, and is it passed from you to your players? Well, I, I hope it is. Uh, you know, it was always the talk of the dinner table when I was a young boy and my dad was on the lacrosse field. He gave 45 years of his life to uh, uh, the growth of the game and the success of the game. And uh, I loved it. I loved uh, my dad's vocation. I loved the, the way he taught the game and the way he uh, had these wonderful young men, and how they grew through the, the academics and the athletics through lacrosse. And I, I hope I pass that on to some of my players for the years. I certainly pass it on to Roy Simmons III, who's uh, now dedicating a lot of his time to teaching of the game now that he's played it uh, for his grandfather and for me. Uh, I just think it's a marvelous, clean, pure game, uh, and, and it's healthy, and that's the important thing. And I guess more than anybody, uh, you were privileged to see history in the making last year when uh, the gate uh, attempted that shot. Gary Gate uh, with the shot that's now famous throughout the lacrosse world. How revolutionary, and I wonder what your dad's response to it was. Well, and of course, he was stunned because of the many years that he coached the sport, that wasn't even thought of, let alone uh, tried. I think my uh, art background, which I have, thanks to Syracuse University, I, uh, I do preach uh, dreams and fantasies, uh, and I think they're both important in, in athletics uh, as well as any other uh, phase of life. And uh, I allow poetic license on the field, uh, unlike a lot of coaches that are very rigid and get themselves into the game almost like a player. I believe in letting the boys have uh, a little rope, letting them use their imagination. If they have dreams and aspirations of being a national title holder or an All-American, or if they have dreams of leaping the cage and throwing the ball in backwards, um, so be it. I think it's good for the game. And I think the day that happened, of course, Penn was a little upset because they were the brunt of it. But as uh, the smoke uh, cleared, uh, the lacrosse world uh, concluded that Gary Gate had done more for the game of lacrosse with that one shot than we have done for ourselves in the last 10 years. He'd added an element to the game which is exciting for the public. And without the public, then it would be a tough game to have. I guess in, in basketball terms, you'd have to compare it to uh, either the, the first jump shot or the first slam dunk. Sure, I think the slam dunk. I've talked to Dolph Shea as many times. I said, Dolph, what do you think of the game of basketball? And he says he doesn't know if he could have slam dunked the ball. But it was great basketball, and he's one of the world's greatest. Yet that, that element of the game, like the alley-oop, uh, I've heard uh, coaches say, basketball coaches say uh, about our basketball team that they would pay to watch our basketball team play. And that's been said to me by other lacrosse coaches. They love to watch Syracuse play. We're imaginative, we're fast, up-tempo. We don't play any kind of uh, stall type ball. And it's, we pretty much take the coach out of the game. And I think that's important. Having said that, that's precisely what I wanted to ask you. There's a tendency, or there has been in recent years, to overcoach the sport, to make situation substitutions, to get into the kind of pattern that I think really hurts professional football, uh, the NFL with role type players. And now this year they've changed a rule that prohibits somebody from deliberately slowing down a game to allow substitutions to be made. Well, two new rules this year, and they both have been made as a result of the way we play. One is a deliberate stall on the defensive end of the field. And that's a discretionary call, but there is such a call now that it wasn't in the books before. People who, in the defensive end of the field, which seemingly is not important, but it is because we play an up-tempo game, stall the ball, take time off the clock. And the other one is a deliberate push or a defensive foul, and a de uh, foul on the defensive end of the field, which would stop the fast break and allow the other team to get special players in. So we have a play-on rule. So the play-on and deliberate stall of the game are two new rules for 89 that have been added, and they use in their test film that they show officials and coaches as examples the Penn and Cornell game that were played in the Carrier Dome. 
and uh, they show Syracuse the way they like to play. It's exciting, it's spectator sport, and we play the game the way it should be played. You know, in basketball, there's so little old-time film because the game now is so much different than it was then. There's almost no old-time lacrosse film to show how many changes there have been in the game. I'm glad there's no old-time film because I think it'd be pretty dull. We thought it was pretty exciting, the wooden stick and uh, the, the scores of 2-3 to three and 4-3, to three, but now I think an exciting game uh, is 18-11 to 11 or or 15-14. That's, that's where the excitement up and down. Good defense, but explosive offense. We like to think that, that our televising of these games has created a, a group of new fans over the last couple of years, but I know from your standpoint, a lot of people get to know about you, strategically speaking. Well, you know, we don't have to be scouted too much anymore. They just sit back and hit a satellite dish or subscribe to the channel, and, and some of the greatest libraries, film footage of uh, of lacrosse or in the Baltimore and the Long Island area uh, where the coach can sit at his desk and turn on a Syracuse game because we are on TV and the only uh, college is on uh, TV weekly and I'm the only coach in the country that has his own uh, coaches show and we show highlights and talk about the game. So that's wonderful for the game, wonderful for the boys, but it's also wonderful for the enemy. It's too bad, Roy. <laughs> We're going to make it tough on you again. Thank you. Thank you. Back in the Carrier Dome at the half, Syracuse 15 and Cortland State 1. Well, there's not too much you can say to analyze what happened in the first half. It was Syracuse scoring nine seconds into the game, and they have just poured it on one after another, and it's can you top this in terms of the spectacular variety of goals, and we're going to check now the Corps' halftime highlights and just show you some of the 15 goals. There were not too many that were of the ordinary variety. Let's pick it up. This is Gary Gate. Behind the, the, back, the pass. back pass. Yeah. There's Gary from Paul. There's the double fake. That made it pass five Richie Barnes. Yeah, pass Barnes. He really didn't have much of a chance on that. Once again, getting the ball down Zilberti looking for a cutter. And he finds Gate. No, that's Marichek. Excuse me. Yes. Tom Marichek, the freshman from British Columbia, with one of his two goals. And there is number two. He had two goals and two assists in the first half. Here's Welski for. Ed Welski, he just powers from behind. He gets jumped by Palin, but you can see the strength, and he put in the lone goal for Cortland State. And here's the way it looks as we check the ADP halftime statistics. 15 to 1 is the score. The shots are 3 to 1 margin, 29 to 10. How about the faceoffs? It's virtually uh, a mirror image of the score. Very difficult. And also, one thing that's not on there is intensity. And I, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm, I'm very surprised that uh, Syracuse is playing with the intensity that they are. We'll be back with the second half right after these words. Back in the Carrier Dome, Dave Cohen and Dale Drypolcher. The second half is... About to begin with a face-off. Kirk Pratt is on for Syracuse. Joe Buffalini is the uh, normal face-off man for the Cortland State Red Dragons. However, this time they're going to try Todd Costa, a junior. He's got a big stick also out there, so little defensive purposes as they've got their big stick middies out already. and. Costa, an interesting story. He's out of uh, Corning East. He's a junior. And he's Todd Costa, who attended Cobbleskill, then Corning, and now Cortland. Almost like you, Dale. <laughs> you were waiting for that. Yeah, huh? I was waiting for that. I was going to say, that's a drop in the so bucket. You, you stopped at Cortland, didn't you? So I, yeah, I was there once, a couple of years, enjoyed it for two years. Was that before Miami or yeah. before Denver? They didn't or, enjoy uh, me. That was... <laughs> <laughs> Was that place up north, too? <laughs> Adirondack Community yes. College. Yep. All right. You're Bob the living Persing. guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Persing against uh, Wargang. Getting it down to Zilberti with the orange high tops. Cross field intended for Scaramazzino. He gets it. He comes in. He scores. Second goal of the game for the big stick, Steve Scaramazzino. And it is 16 to 1. That time, 16 seconds or 26 seconds uh, to open a quarter with a score. So they're slowing down. It was nine at the start, 11, and now 26. New goal. There it is, number 11. Is it? Let me check. Ray Carnicelli, by the way, is the goalie. Yeah, I was just try. Couldn't get his number. There it is, Carnicelli in. 
John Zoberti picks up assist number six in the game. And Scaramazzino has his second goal. That's a new career high. Two goals in one game for him. Yeah, well, it would usually with a big stick, that would be a, a record. Syracuse working the ball. That'd be a season's high. Yep. Could be a career high while we're talking about it. There's Gary Gate off the pick behind the back. Dumpson goes low. And Syracuse keeps it. Zoberti is back there. You know, it must feel to some of these Cortland players like they're playing, what, 10 against 6 out there? Very, very difficult for them. Zoberti moving behind the goal, taking Clodson with him, and then gets the ball off. Dumpson. Paul Gate. Jim Egan is on. Now Zoberti. Good thing Gary decided to wear those uh, blue tights under his shorts, and now you can really tell him apart from Paul. Yeah. Egan reversing. Dumps in signals for Gary Gate to come his way, and he gives it up to him. And he gives it off to Paul. He fakes left, goes right, comes in, bounces it off the goalie, Carnicelli, and in. Three guys hit him on that. Literally put the body to him, but the moves are all there. And this is a nice crowd watching this as there's the move by Paul and then bang, bang, bang. He's going to attract a lot of attention. And Carnicelli out of Auburn, New York, not able to stop it. And gate goes to three and three. You know what? I mentioned the intensity. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's really, Syracuse is really tough. The North Carolina, the Hopkins, they got that over early and now they're back and you think, well, they might have a letdown even though they lost a the game. I'm, they're very, very intense and playing very well. You know, last year, too, in going through the season undefeated, they played every game on artificial surface. Yep. And they are, uh, yeah, it's not that they can't play on, on the, the grass. I think they're just, they're more used to it, and they're much faster. You get guys that got good speed. I think the natural surface will, the grass will slow you down. Well, you get such a predictable bounce or a roll here. Right, that's true also. And it's a flat surface here as well. Also Syracuse, the, uh, by the way, will play one game on Coin Field this year later in the season. That'll be interesting because that's not flat. <laughs> that'll be April 29th against Penn. <laughs> Wilkes separated from the ball and it rolls into Matt Palum's territory. We're going to have to keep a stat here at uh, double O in for Syracuse. That's DiLorenzo, the freshman for Syracuse. Lorenzo, highly recruited out of high school. Syracuse very, very good at the goalie position. Earl Hall with the ball now. Up top to Cahey's in the game. Dan Cahey starts his move. He shoots and it's saved by Carnicelli. He outlets it. There's a slash. Yep. Yeah, the flag is thrown now. <laughs> that was by sound, I called that one. And here's a shot coming from in close. They, well, they don't attempt Two. it yet. A second flag is down. Two men down. Third flag is down. The shot is saved ah. by DiLorenzo. Three, men Three down flags. Down well. Jerry DiLorenzo out of Levittown, a freshman with his first carrier dome action. out okay there's a there's the one that I caught by sound you can hear it up here you got to call that one Two slashing and, uh, there's the other one Syracuse is right there number 30 so now you've got DiLorenzo I mentioned DiLorenzo highly recruited and Syracuse seconds. also has 21 Lee Hine a sophomore out of Maryland who's also a pretty good goalie so they have a real good goalie situation So two one-minute penalties, personals, against Syracuse. It's six on four. Cortland State has had two man-up opportunities. They've scored on one. They trail 17 to one. Stokes. 
Stouffer and Scaramazzino and Schluter. Oh, it's, it's actually six on five now. Yeah. Or is it? Yes. Syracuse now will have an opportunity to get rid of the penalty. It's Cahey sitting in the penalty box. New rule this year, too. You have to serve your own penalty. Used to be you could come off and you couldn't go back in, but you could go down on the bench. Now uh, you have to sit in the penalty box. I like that one. It makes it a whole lot easier to follow. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you look down and you say, who's in there? This is Gary Gate. He just ran it right up past Wilkes. And he gets it in the box. That should release. Nice pass for Scaramazzino. He was thinking goal number three there. <laughs> Scaramazzino getting into the offense. Zoberti had to tap it, and he did successfully to keep it in play. Now he gets a little bounce feed from Egan. Zoberti showing no signs of the leg problems he had in the past. Here's Gary Gate behind the back, deflected, saved by Gary. He can stop on a dime, big and powerful as he is. He does it. Alongside the crease repeatedly. Here he comes. Egan sets the pick. He rolls with the pick. Uh, yeah. Here he comes. Underhand he scores. You know, those aren't showboat goals either. I mean, what you got to do is you got to take the area where they're going to give you, and they get a stick up on you, and you say, well, the only way I can do it is to scoop it low. And Gary Gate did just that, and he can do it from behind the back and one handed. and. Watch, watch Egan. Egan moves. Oh, there's two guys, and now they're going to get picked off. And he sees there's a stick, so he goes beneath the stick as they tried to get a. Greg Bishop tried to stop him, but he went under Bishop's stick. You know, I think you realize too, Dale, they were waiting for that behind the back, over the shoulder shot. And you're looking at his shoulders, the next thing you know, the ball's coming around knee level. There's one of those flags we talked about Canadian flags, a number of them here in the dome. 18 to 1. Number of athletes. Yeah, they realize they're on TV. Hello, folks. How you doing? <laughs> Morgan gets it down to Roth. Roth. He makes his move. McCabe knocks the ball away. Takes it away. Pat McCabe. Master of the poke check takeaway. Almost runs over the official. Gets the ball. On the far side. And here's Syracuse's transition game. Person up ahead to Schluter. Cannon is racing across. Burns is going to get the ball. Greg Burns, who has a goal in the game. As you look at that Syracuse roster, lots of local kids with a nice mixture of Canadians and people from Maryland. Ball Cannon now. Burns. Egan getting a lot of time here in the third quarter. The clock has not stopped very often in this game with the new rules this year. And that's a welcome sign. Syracuse leading at 18 to 1 with nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Both teams came in at two and one. Is Brooke Chase got tied up, got the ball taken away, trying to get it back. Portland State tries to get out of there with it. Not successful, however. And stepping on the sideline as he came up field for Syracuse, Jason Picorni. Picorni out of Scarsdale, New York. It's only Dave, you look at the roster, there's one person, Scott Snyder, 47, from Delray Beach, Florida. Meanwhile, on Cortland State's roster, only two players from out of New York. John Doran, a freshman from Connecticut, and Dave Matz, also from Connecticut. Norwalk and Simsbury. He goes down, here's the flag, and he'll stop play. That was McCabe and Stouffer. I don't know who the penalty was on. They were both there. It looks like it's going to be McCabe. One minute penalty on Syracuse. There's the slashing called uh, number There's one. They actually got him on, on the top of the head. Slashing. It was Stouffer, but or McKay, but McCabe's inadvertent up. too. He yeah. kind of ducked down and hit the stick with his head. <laughs> Stouffer applying pressure. Claude's in from behind the cage. Feeding Welski goes to the right hand. Took a lot of time to switch. Clodson, as we mentioned, started on the defense and has now switched to attack. 
Welski gets it back. He fires and misses. Cortland State's Clodgen, now a feeder back there. They're looking for any kind of answer. Up high, score. Number 29, Ed Welski. Left-handed shot, chest high, and DiLorenzo not able to handle it. He has both of the Cortland State goals. Nice pass from Clodzen. There's the left-handed shot. Ooh. You know, you mentioned Clodzen now going to offense. Cortland goal. We talked earlier about Paul Wareham, who played for Cortland State. He was a two-way player back then. I'll tell you, he was. I played in some summer league games against him. He's just amazing. Excellent lacrosse player and an excellent lacrosse coach. Cortland has had their share. Amaya with the ball now for Syracuse. Freddie Amaya, freshman out of Hicksville, number eight. 33 is Matt Moore, 200 pound sophomore from Fayetteville. Lots of new names and faces. Everybody's seeing time in this game. Hotailing now at the cannon. Joe Bonacci's in. He sets the pick. Now he goes out to the point. You know, lots of times when you get well, the guys who don't play a lot in, you think they'd get sloppy and look for scores, but Syracuse is being patient, and that's a credit also. It's difficult sometimes. You just want to go in and start. Here's Bonacci changing directions. Very few four shots yeah. by the Syracuse team. That's exactly what I was talking about. Oh, oh double, he gets up in a teams. hurry, finds hotailing, and he overshoots Brooke Chase. Bonacci looked like he was tripped, but he bounced up and just as quickly as he went down. Well, that's what they call a nice look. Uh, even though the pass wasn't on target after they got the ball, the, the look was there. He knew where he wanted to go with it, and hotailing just got a little high with the pass as they got a stick on it, I believe. There's the there's the stumble and the and the trip and there's the uh, hoteling says I'm in trouble where's my help and then just a little bit high but he was looking in the right direction. Egan meantime was open to the other side but he couldn't see him. Under seven minutes to go now this third quarter. Syracuse applying a lot of pressure on the ride they've been doing it all game. Morgan can't handle it. Picked up by Picorni he goes now to Egan. Egan sorting out his options. Chase, far side and out of bounds. There's a look at the Syracuse bench, the Brothers Gate. Gary 22, Paul 19, and there's Z, John Zaberti, who was injured in those NCAA playoffs last year, had an arm injury. I asked him about it. He said it's fine. He's taken a couple of shots on it. He said it's held up well. Gate brothers have combined for 10 goals and five assists. Not a bad day. Not over yet. No. Nope. Syracuse leading at 18 to 2. Syracuse sending on Andrew Bolin in the game. He likes to sprint out from the bench area right toward the cage. They haven't spotted him yet. Bolin not especially. Uh, Big target either, Dave. There's a hit. That was Bolin. Yep. And with pretty good foot speed to the ball. Graham gets it for Portland. Takes it down. Side looks to feed. Gets to Roth. What a change of direction move there. Matt Chapel, number 18. This is Bennett. Bennett coming in. A shot and a flag. Stratton, I think, going to be called for a hold. Just a guess. Yeah, that'll be a hold. Stratton, 31. Freshman, out of Homer. You can see there, there's the progress right there. You can see the heads snap back a little bit as they Try to make it around the cage. 30 seconds holding, call on number 31, Todd Stratton. 30 seconds holding, penalty on Syracuse. Man up opportunity now. 
Dodson playing on the attack. To Roth. Bennett. Wilkes. Here's Bennett. Bennett from outside. It's stopped by DiLorenzo. Jerry gets it out to McCabe. McCabe holding the ball low. Carrying it across low. Keeping it away from any possible poke check and coming all the way in for a shot. And the save made by Carnicelli. Good job on the part of both uh, McCabe and Carnicelli. There's Carnicelli coming out of the cage. Looking for his wing, got him, but ball's down at the midfield up to redirect it. Chris Hogue, number 23, sent it back. Carnicelli on the exchange. Carnicelli on the move. Ray Carnicelli is a junior out of Auburn. Get a little playing time. That's going to help him later in the season. Welski with it. This McNamara. might be the longest that Cortland State has controlled the ball in the game. Regular defense in. First team defense and big sticks. And Dale, maybe we can eavesdrop a little on the goalie here and hear him pulling out the defensive assignments. Check sticks. Means anybody stick that's near me, get a stick on it. There's a four on two. Chase deflected. Carnicelli's going to get there and get it for Cortland State. Yeah, you can hear. You hear some. Generally, the goalies will call out positions and they'll tap the, the pipes, and then they try to let them know that, all right, people got the ball in here. Let's check sticks wherever you are. Make sure that you're stick on stick with that guy. So. He can't get a shot off. That's Cartland's goalie. Who has Carnicelli just started the second half. Junior out of Auburn. On the sideline, Walter's in trouble. O'Taley nearly picked his pocket. Delora has it. He sends it back. Good job by Carnicelli to keep possession. I'll tell you one thing, Cortland's gotten some good practice against a team that's going to ride him very, very hard, and I think they've haven't been in the same. Oh, now here's a problem. And Chase steals. He fanned on the shot, and he stepped in the crease. Yep, he did. He can't believe what he just did. He lost the goalie, had the open cage, blew the shot, and stepped in the crease. He doesn't want to come back to the bench. <laughs> Well, he'll have a good day. He's a good athlete, but you're right. Right there, he had some problems. So he steals the ball. Yeah, he just got. Well, he got a stick up on him, and then you can see his foot in the crease as number 20 Costa got a stick on him. We'll be back in a minute. Well, they make everybody sit on one side of the dome here during the lacrosse games, unless there's a, a huge crowd, but. Good crowd turned out. Many of them have since left, with the score being uh, so one-sided. Should be a closer game when Hofstra comes here. That's when you'll see it Sunday, April the 9th at 8 p.m. from Super Sports. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypulcher in closing two and a half minutes of quarter number three. Carnicelli, the goalie, is a way out of his cage. Nice pass. Right down the sideline for J.J. Graham. Persing is draped all over him. Gorland State maintaining greater control of the ball. Ill-advised shot that time by Wilkes. Syracuse tries to come out of there with it, but it's regained by the Red Dragons. Here's an opportunity and a score hey, by Roth. John Roth. Now good things come in small packages. John Roth gets the goal. Uh, there he is. Two, That's his first of the year. Chapel got the ball two, to him. John nice, Ross. nice. Put it right down between the legs of DeLorenzo. Chapel. He was at Nassau Community College. DeLorenzo was. Didn't play there. Got his. 
grades up and transferred up to Syracuse, so he is. You mean freshman. to Cortland? Yeah. <laughs> no, Di Lorenzo from. Oh, oh, I thought yeah. you meant uh, Roth. No, I was talking about Di Lorenzo oh. when he got scored on there because he was highly recruited, ended up at Nassau for a semester for a year, and then up here at Syracuse. There's Buffalini on the face. Portland State gets it. There's Roth, Roth again. Nice oh, spin right. move. Buffalini lost it, but it's McKinnon keeping it. First time in the game, Portland State has scored back to back goals, Dale. Well, let's look up Roth while we got a chance. Try captain. With the ball now, John Roth. And a diesel student. Check sticks. Hey, heard that check sticks we mentioned before, which means help, help. Is that a mayday call? By the no, guy? basically it's just to let them know that they've got the ball in a scoring position and make sure you check the stick of the guy you're closest to. Todd Stratton is the Syracuse man who got dumped. Syracuse comes back and they work the ball around beautifully for the goal. Jim Egan waiting at the door. Jim Egan out of Yorktown. Baracek started it. Well, that was a neat pass. Yeah, and there's the final pass made by Hotailing. I believe he's going to get another assist. I think he got one before. That's his second, and Jim Egan with his first goal. Egan only a junior. Yorktown has turned out a fair number of lacrosse players for this program and others. 19 to 3. That was the score. By number nine, Jim Egan, with an assist to number 13, Mark Hotelli. Goal by number nine, Jim Egan. Assist John McKinnon to 13, scooping it up on the face. Mark Hotelli at Syracuse. 19, Portland 3. One minute. Chris Robinson is in there now for Syracuse as a freshman midi from Greenwich, Connecticut. Where's number 37? You got Stratton, get up. There's Stratton, number 31. Our De Lorenzo's voice comes through loud and clear, doesn't it? That's right. He's got a good TV voice. You know, speaking about intensity, I'll have to say this about Cortland. That it's hard to say 19 to 3, but they have not gotten sloppy. They have not given up in terms of the fact that they just said, wow, this is ridiculous. They really have persevered, not having a lot of success, but they are working. I wonder what he's thinking about. teaches art here at Syracuse University. Coach Simmons. Syracuse is taking their time. 28 seconds left. Get the ball back down behind. No, nope, oh, on the wing. Hotelling with the ball now. Giving it up. That's the young man Robinson we talked about, the midfielder. Maracek from behind, up top now to. Good save by Carnicelli. The rebound, another save by Carnicelli. Out it comes to Robinson. And they can't get another shot away before the third quarter comes to an end. And at the end of the third With the score, Syracuse 19 and Cortland State 3. There's that scramble at the end of the third quarter. Matt Moore made the initial move. And he took the shot. Egan with a rebound and Carnicelli saved them both. We'll be back in a minute. Now the fourth quarter. Dave Cohen, Dale Drive pulled you with you from Super Sports. Starting the fourth Syracuse three led 15 to 1 at the half. Is number 21. So it's a 4-2 game so far. That's right. For the... Lee Hine is the Syracuse goalie here in the fourth quarter. It's all his. Matt Palin played the first half. Jerry DiLorenzo the third quarter. Now this will be Hines' quarter. He is the shortest of the three. Lee Hine. Nice they have. Uh, luxury of having three goalies. Andy Smith taking the face off for Syracuse. Legal procedure to call against Syracuse. Ball goes Portland State will get it on the violation, the illegal procedure on the face. Syracuse, as you can see, the jerseys with the number 103, in memory of the victims of Flight 103. 
Fourth quarter, 19 to three. Last year it was 26 to 10 Syracuse. They've beaten Cortland State nine of the last 10 years. You remember that first quarter though last year, Cortland had him running. Andy Wilk. Wilkes is being played tightly by Brian Tully, one of the two Tully brothers. Nice pass over the top. Yeah, kind of weak, but uh, high up with it, looking for an outlet man. And he finds Stratton. Stratton, yep. Todd Stratton with Bonacci coming on. Near side, they come out to Goodwin. I'm looking down my roster, I think everybody has played. I know we've called out everybody's name. Wait a minute. Scott Snyder from Delray Beach, yeah. Florida. Shot. Oh, nice check. Good check by 27. Smart. Over the top they go intended for Bonacci. Bonacci has it now. Bonacci has it checked away, but it bounces to a Syracuse man. They feed the crease. At least they try to, and on the far side, it's Syracuse again. Pointing up with it. They get it back. And Bonacci's going to start it again from up top as they shift some players down. Not many people behind, just on the wings of the goal of the crease. Now they go behind. Replaced from the crease, and it's a one on one. Bonacci, Bonacci spinning left. It's the area to shoot right, and he bounces it by Carnicelli. I think he just intended to bounce it in front, and he was fortunate it found the upper left hand corner. Joe Bonacci gets the goal. Unassisted goal. McKinnon, number one, 16 on Bonacci. Bonacci, Bonacci takes him down, turns one, him around, and Bonacci then takes the shot. Syracuse, 20. Cortland, giving Syracuse a 20th goal. Second goal for Joe Bonacci. He had 17 in his two years at the uh, U.S. Naval Academy. Another face-off. Let's see, is it Andy Smith out there? I just check on the number well, it looks here. like a two, so it can't be Smith. No, it's Pratt. Yeah. Pratt may even get to stay on now instead of racing off the field. Portland State wins it. They overpass it to Welski. Wilkes gets it back to Welski, but it was intercepted. Pratt down there playing defense. Welski had it. Sends it behind as they change. Welski sets up shop right in front. He's got company there. Tully. Bill Tully. He's 6'4", 239. And Bill and Brian Tully. One's 230, one's 240. And here's Welski. Out it goes to midfield. The battle is on. It's kicked across. Portland State trying to regain possession. Pacorni gets shoved around a bit. Nick Boynton is there. Pacorni racing back to get it. Nice change of direction by Jason. Flipping it ahead to Boynton. Goodwin in the slot. And the shot is put in. For Syracuse by Kurt Pratt. So he said he got to stay on. And here he is coming through with a goal. That's his first of the year. Kurt Pratt gets the goal. Face off man. Splits two Cortland defenders as he got by Walter and able to put it by and Boynton is going to get the assist. So lots of different people playing. Faceoffs, Syracuse decided edge. 18 to 7. New faceoff man for Syracuse, or at least in that one, Paul Cannon. And that was the first goal of Kirk Pratt's career. Well, explains why he's excited, I guess. Syracuse, Cortland Ball. There's Cannon, and we'll see what he, it's hard to see here, but some guys try to flip, some guys try to clamp. It looked like they tried to clamp. Cortland tried to clamp. That was Buffalini, and Cannon was trying to flip. And I guess they're exchanging strategies there on the way out. It's quite an art facing off. 
we said last year, Bill Durgill, 70%. Kind of spoiled Syracuse, I think. Here comes one of the Tullys, right? Yeah. That's Bill. Oh! On the head. That's a sound slash. <laughs> Didn't phase him a bit. No, they... Those helmets are pretty good. We used to play ones with cardboard, you know, those were, those were delightful. With the face masks that were worse than having none at all. There's the, he's gonna get on top of the head. Boink, right Ooh. there. <laughs> There's a full swipe, too. Yep. Somebody's gotta go in the penalty box. The guilty man does. Yes. Dumpson, Rodney Dumpson. Starting out up top as they work the ball around on this man up. Oh, Zilberti and the Gates are back on. They've been sitting for a long while, haven't they? One minute penalty. Here's Dumpson up high and right in the net. Quick feet and a quick release. Rodney Dumpson comes on and gets the job done. It's 22 to 3. Consolation there for Ray Carnicelli from Dave Walter. Yep. And there's the nice shot. You get a great look at that and you find out how difficult it is to have to have these guys come back on and play because Dumpson's got a great shot. And six, Rodney Dumpson, assist to number 22, Gary Deer. Goal by number six, Rodney Dumpson, assist number 22. Paul Cannon's out again to take the face against uh, Buffalini. You know, Jerry Casciani said the coach from Cortland said, you know, we couldn't play this outside. We come up here every year. There's four inches of snow on our field. They were practicing on coin field earlier this week, so get a little practice time in might help them out as their season progresses. A team that uh, should have some say in the Division Three playoffs. Right now, they're having their hands full with Syracuse. There's a pass that goes over the head of all the intended white shirts, and on the turnover, Cortland State gets it back. You know, even if there was no snow on the ground today, outside now, the temperatures, I believe, are in the teens. Yeah, it's nippy. <laughs> the hit in the head that he got might have been a <laughs> right at 12 degrees. I think our uh, Cook Cablevision crew is delighted to be in here after the St. Patrick's Day parade. Many, many hours out in sub zero conditions, wind chill wise. I know I'm glad we're in here. Syracuse leading at 22 to 3. We're in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes to go. Nick Boynton. Boynton gave it up and set the pick. But Corny is going to give it back to him. Cannon rushes on and gets the pass. Paul Cannon, not getting any picks to work with, and giving it back to Boynton. Being patient, Boynton now going to deal. Nice move, good speed. What do we got here? A pick? No, ball. Ball boy lost the ball. One of the few uh, stoppages of play tonight, fortunately, in a one-sided game. Gonna get set. Boynton now. McCourney lost his man. He's got a chance to come in and shoot. He does, but he fired it right at the goalie Carnicelli. Marker goes down. This is a play on situation right here. McKinnon takes it across, so Cortland State allowed to transition. That's the new rule in effect. They're going to have an opportunity as Bennett feeds the crease. It's intercepted, and now the play will stop. That was a textbook example of how the new rule is uh, being used this year. Well, there's, there's two new rules. One is that the flag will go down anywhere. It used to be if you were in your defensive half of the field that they would blow the whistle and stop play. Now it's a flag down anywhere on the field. And the other is that no matter where the ball is, <clears throat> if the offensive man loses the ball or is pushed and there's, for example, and there's 
no possession. They don't want to stop the play and hurt the fast break opportunity. So there's a that's a that wasn't the penalty actually right there. The penalty was way before that. But that gives you a good look at uh, how they try to check there as. Uh, Andy Boland tried to take that ball away, but uh, penalty now will go for man up, Cortland. We only had 12 man up situations in the game when you've got 25 goals scored. That's not really too bad. It's been a pretty well played game. Shot, yes. Nice pass and a very fine shot there. Cortland State gets their fourth goal of the game. That was Chris Hogue, the junior from Corning West. Yep. He didn't have much room to shoot for, but he put it where he had to. That's Stouffer, Stouffer being attended to. Looking at his knee, hope there's not a lot of movement there. He was injured. I believe he had, was in a car accident in the summer. Cortland Talley, uh, number 23. Chris had Oak, a couple of injuries. With an assist to number six, Andy Wilkes. Goal by number. That was last summer, and he was back. 23. In the fall. Chris Oak, assist number six, Andy Wilkes. Yeah, they missed. Uh, I think they missed the fall season. A couple of guys missed. We got an offside here. No push. So Cortland Ball. Well, play Jay getting he? a little sloppy now in the final yeah. eight minutes. Can't blame either team. No. Syracuse exploded coming out of the gate, literally. Gary Gates scoring nine seconds into this game, and the route was on. Two Gates have combined for ten goals and five assists. We've seen Air Gate. We've seen the variation on a theme. We've seen uh, Tom Maracek debuting at home with a couple of behind-the-back goals. And you just saw Cortland State throw the ball away, an unforced error. Well, this, the subway gate didn't work, but he lets you know that he can do it now from any place. So he'll draw a lot of interesting coverages, which they have already this year. They have drawn different kinds of coverages in an attempt to disrupt the pacing. Cortland State's going to apply uh, some pressure now. Let's see how Syracuse deals with it. There's a Maya. One way is to run it up, but he looks as he gets in some trouble. Passes it back to Kehi, who gets Finds it up Bonacci. to Bonacci. Bonacci deals, triple team, get rid of the ball. Intended for a Maya. He's going to have to race to save it, and he does, but he stepped on the line. This is one of the things when they look at the, the tapes, uh, the coaches will say to the young guys in playing, well, when you see you're getting pressure from two and three guys, look for the open man, get rid of the ball quicker. Little things, even though at a 22 to four, it's something you're always coaching. John Deska, one of the assistants, always working down there. There's the, the big man, the boss. Wasn't Roy a, a tie and jacket man last season on the sideline? Well, he still got a jacket. <laughs> I mentioned uh, Kevin Donahue, also one of the assistants, and not a bad faceoff man in his day. No, and Roy Simmons the third back coaching this year after a stint at Cuca College. Seven thirty-two to go. Syracuse leading it twenty-two to four. They get the ball right around the right up by the restraining line. They're going to send it back to the goalie, Hine. As Hine walks it up, gets it off to the wing. Flag Marker down. Marker is down. Hine is being pursued by Welski. That's it. And offsides is the call. Steve Miller makes the call and Co Cortland offside. Makes the adjustment to man down. It's a 30 second technical. Here's John Desco. Cortland offsides. Long time assistant coach at Syracuse. Very intense. 
There's Rodney dumps it on now. Along with Tom Marachek. Zoberti and the Gates. Burns in the middle, missed that, and it goes to Zoberti. Flag down again. Let's we'll see what the oh, slash. Good reason why Burns missed it. He was slashed. That's right. Hey, Dave Walter, number nine. Walter is going to take a seat. One minute slashing. One minute slashing. Finally called on. There it is. Number nine yep. of Portland, Dave Walter. Players are having a hard time remembering when they come off that they do have to serve the penalty. Yeah, it's They're, a new rule. Here's Marichek open behind the back, Zoberti. And John faking the pass, puts it by Carnicelli, upping the count now to 23 to 4. This is tough when. Portland goes back and looks at their tape. John Zoberti getting the goal. I believe goal that's his first of the game. Three for the Orange this evening, scored by number 11, John Zilberti. John Zilberti with the goal. There's the assist Zilberti's to name as Tom Marichek. Tom Marichek, 42 on the assist. The goal to 11, John Zilberti. Zilberti getting his first goal, but he does have five assists. Well, you said Zilberti has been used uh, a little bit more as an assist man, not necessarily in this game, but but you've got that midfield they've got, the attack. Always looking to feed. Right now, Rip ball chase, down. Going to be closest to it. And Zilberti was a scorer until a, a couple of guys named Gate arrived last year. Suddenly his role changed. Yep. Late flag down by Steve Miller, the official. On the move with it for Syracuse, Andy Bolin. When the ball comes loose, they'll stop it as they're doing right now. The last three minutes of this game have been played at a snail's pace compared to the first three quarters. Yep. They got a slash. Penalties against Portland, number 28. So Portland will not be slashing. Man down as Portland penalty. One minute. Dave Haas. 6'3", 230. I thought he was a pretty big kid. He'll be sitting down. He, he caught somebody in the face mask. So we'll get a man up situation. <laughs> so give There's, us time to check out John Zilberti's goal, his first and only of the game. Oh, There's a, a pass. Nice, nice pass by Marichek and then just a little shuffle by John and the Z-man puts it in. This is the fourth game of the year for Syracuse. They'll be three and one in a matter of minutes. After this one, Syracuse will play Towson State out at Manhattan on Long Island of the Day of Champions. Then they'll travel to Brown. And uh, our next action for you will have Hofstra on Sunday, April 9th. Then we'll be at Hobart to bring you a game. And we'll have home games against Cornell, Rutgers, and Pennsylvania. I've got the pipe. Ricochets out. K he has. From behind. Amaya and now Chase. Right inside score. Freddie Amaya gets the goal. One of the things about Syracuse in doing their lacrosse games is the Syracuse goal by those VCRs are humming down in Ithaca, Fred New York, where Maya, Richie Moran and the Cornell team are having pretty good success, and they'll be looking at guys like Amaya, who just got the goal. Brooke Chase on the assist, but Syracuse is well scouted, and it'll be interesting to see the defenses we see against the Gates this year as we get some of the other teams, especially the teams like Richie Moran and some of those people will devise to Try to negate the midfield strength of Syracuse. And of course, Syracuse so balanced, people said coming into the season, you know, look look at the attack they've got. It's uh, they got Zilberti back and they got Egan, they've got all sorts of talent. And then you look at that midfield, very difficult to contend with. And that was goal number one in the career of Fred Amaya at Syracuse with five minutes and five seconds to go. 
you know, something else, Dave, a lot of people, I don't think they figured on Marichek either, which was, he was kind of an unknown quantity, obviously, as a freshman, so they got a lot to think about. Zaberti, Marichek, and the Brothers Gate, and a good defense with McCabe and Stouffer, Matt Palem. Here's a good move and a score and a gorgeous play by Freddie Amaya. So he gets number one and he comes right back with number two. It is 25 to 25. That went unassisted. By you know, looking at Brett that uh, defense of Syracuse with McNamara and Stouffer and McCabe, very, very strong. There's the, the goal, but Syracuse, you can see why they were picked in the, the Baltimore papers preseason number one. They really don't have a a real weak spot on the team and then Dave as you know in any sport they've got depth which really helps twenty five to four when this is over we'll have our Pepsi player of the game <laughs> you pick up Syracuse in to the transition mode and working the ball up quickly here comes Chase. There goes Chase. Oh. Amaya has it again. He's a vacuum cleaner back there. Matt Moore. Amaya closest to it as it goes out. So Syracuse keeps it with 4.25 to go. Amaya only a freshman showing why he was so highly recruited. A real hustler getting some shots off. Playing back up. They get set. Amaya will bring the ball in as they whistle it ready. He's going one on one. Now he gives it up. Syracuse will keep it again off the hard shot. Andrew Boland takes the shot wide. They put it back in play quickly. Coming down to four minutes to go. Boland has it. Get it to Maya. He's seen a lot of time in his home debut. Nick Boynton now. Quick stick. Nice save. Nice save by Carnicelli. He's going to get some action these last three minutes, 42 seconds. Double. Ball down. And Syracuse keeps it. Ball cannon. Nice stop and go. Gets checked twice and gets away. The crowd likes that. And he feeds. Great look. And they overshoot Andy Bowling. Jason Picorni was the man who made the pass, but another one of those good looks, guys, is they got the ball in and really started to look for the goal, started to get down there, Boynton and company passing, but it did go awry. But a lot of the young guys getting some experience. By the way, Dale, I think everybody who's dressed for this game and could play did play. I see uh, your man Snyder on the sideline, but he doesn't have pads on. Oh. Three minutes to go in this game. Thought there might be a collision there. Portland State. Will be two and two when this one is over, and they'll get back to competition that's more on their level. They'll face Ithaca on April the first. Flag is down, and now they stop it. Coming up for Cortland State, Ithaca, Potsdam, and then the big one with Hobart and Ohio Wesley, and both away. Ooh. Geneseo, St. Lawrence, Nazareth, RIT, and then they host Maryland. I don't know if that's University of Maryland or it must be not UMBC. It says Maryland on May the 6th. You know how tough Ohio West thinking that you and I have been out there to see them play and see them play Hobart. They're a very good team. Intercepted nicely by McKinnon and Carnicelli will play it out with two and a half minutes to go. They use that zone defense. Huh? Yeah. Battling bishops. Yep. There is more and more zone that you're seeing these days. Uh, 
in college lacrosse. Chase goes down, gives it up. Syracuse may see some more of that. They saw a lot of it last year in different situations sometimes, and sometimes more or less the whole game to try to slow things down a little bit. And Ohio Wesleyan used it. Dennis Simmons, Mike McGee, and Dan Lannon are on now for Syracuse. Twenty five to four. Delora getting it upfield. I thought I was nervous. Answer machine. Portland State had only one goal of the half. Nice save down low by Lee Hyde. That's a story here. We'll get a little whistle. Oh, illegal check. Hey, the officials are in it right till the end. I'll see Hine make the save. Ball down low. Gets the rebound. That's the important thing. Syracuse timeout. Now we've got a timeout taken by Syracuse with a minute 52 to go in the game. Minute 52 to go. It is 25 to 4. Yeah, I wonder what Roy Simmons is going to talk about now at this point in the game. Yeah, well... <laughs> I don't think he's going to say you guys got to stay on edge here. I think he's going to, he just wants everybody to do similar to what Cortland's been doing. Just do what you've been doing. Let's get this over with. But get people in, make sure they know positions they're in. And our next game should be interesting. Uh, Hofstra from Long Island up against Syracuse on Sunday, April 9th. It'll be at 8 o'clock. The, the Dutchman, huh? The Flying yeah, Dutchman? Yeah, Flying Dutchman. You, you didn't attend Hofstra, did you, Dale? No, but I lived right near their campus. <laughs> I don't know if that counts or not. Hey, if you're down in the Hofstra area and <laughs> you get us on Super Sports, drop us a line here at Cook Cable Vision, 500 South Salina Street in Syracuse, 13202, and let us know how you like our coverage of Syracuse lacrosse because we enjoy bringing it to you. As Roy Simmons the third. Still coaching with 148 left. Ed Welski who has two of the four goals for Cortland, number 29. One thing we can say, the game went fairly quickly for having 29 goals scored, Dave. Eh? Well, the first three quarters did, for sure. Yep. This last quarter has been marred by whistles. We're down to the last 85 seconds. Are they playing for one? Portland State not looking for a shot immediately here. Ground ball and a couple of players go down. A little bit of crunching down there just to let everybody know they were been in a game. Plods in and is that Sean McGowan who got into it there? Plods uh, is taking his gloves off. He's departing. Yeah, I think he'll be down for the rest of the game. He has played defense and offense. McGowan is being asked to leave. There's the, there was the hole, I believe. There's a slash there. There's an illegal check. Slightly. This could be this one. Unnecessary roughness. Got 45 white. One minute. Body check. He was already out. He was already in the box. He was already in the box. They had a little discussion about where everybody is. 77 white. Well, with a minute and two seconds to go, and the game not exactly on the line at 25 to four, they get it worked out quickly. Syracuse, two men down. Again, to Cortland State's credit, they came out and uh, tried to play their game, the style that they want to play for the remainder of the year. They didn't try to slow it down or come out with any gimmicks. Nope. They played to win and not to lose. Right now, they've got a man up opportunity. Syracuse, two men. The slammer. 
The score means nothing here. To execute is what's important against this caliber of competition. Syracuse down one man now. Gathered in Hine. by Lee Hine. He's going to give it a ride. Way downfield. The crowd that's here is still into it, aren't yeah. they? Good fans here in Central New York. They tended for, is that Tully or? Syracuse Lannan. offside. 28 seconds remaining. Going to get the ball, Cortland, one more time here. See if they can clear it. Everybody playing to the last second. That's Hopkins, got rid of it, way upfield. Ten seconds to go. From behind the cage, Hine is out. The cage is empty, but there will not be another shot. It's all over here in the Carrier Dome. The first home lacrosse game of the year. Syracuse wins it 25 to 4. They go to 3 and 1 on the year. Cortland State falls to 2 and 2. We'll be back in a minute with our Pepsi Player of the Game. They're filing out of the Carrier Dome, having seen Syracuse's first home performance of the year. And it was a game in which Gary Gate opened up the scoring nine seconds into the game, and he scored seven goals in all. This one coming in the second half, the underhanded variety. How many did he get, Dale? Seven goals, three assists, Dave. Not a bad night. And he is our Pepsi player of the game, Gary Gate. Off to another spectacular start. The man who has revolutionized lacrosse. And earlier in this game, he, he had one of his diving efforts, not over the top, but around the side. So Syracuse has defeated Cortland State 25 to 4. We hope you enjoyed it today from Super Sports. Don't forget to be with us when Syracuse hosts Hofstra. You'll see it on many of these same stations Sunday, April the 9th at 8 p.m. Our thanks to statisticians Randy Paselli, Dan Litka, Karen Ryan. Now speaking for Dale Drypulter, this is Dave Cohen thanking you for joining us and reminding you to be with us all season long for Syracuse Lacrosse. This has been a presentation of Super Sports and Cook Cable Vision of Syracuse.